Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the Football Manager Save, it's episode number 18. And today we're returning with the final two games of the Premier League, first half of the season before we go away for the World Cup in 2022. We've got Norwich away and West Ham at home. Before we get to the games though, Jeff Fulham getting on, off camera. So of course, in the last episode, you saw the back-to-back -back draws at home to Burnley, then the credible goalless draw at the Emirates Stadium against Arsenal. Four games in the run off-camera, and whilst our winless run was extended to five after a home loss to Everton, where Moyes Keane once again came to Craven Cottage and set up shop in our six-yard area. Moyes, Miroslav, Kloza, Keane scored both goals in the game uh, as they beat us by two goals to one. Knockout scored a sensational free kick, but sadly counted for nothing as Keane right now is just living in a six-yard box. Box. Might as well rent it out, the money he'd make in West London, seriously. But uh, three straight wins followed on the back of a pretty poor run, starting with a 1-0 victory at home to Aston Villa, uh, who of course won the championship last season in the game. Got a little bit lucky in this game as well, didn't play especially well, but a little bit of a pinball goal in stoppage time, saw Mitrovic bang in the game winner. And with the amount of late goals we've conceded in this save, it's always nice when one goes our way, you know, uh, to try and get uh, things in our favour. Uh, following that 2-0 victory away against Brighton and Hove Albion, so back-to-back -back clean sheets. Patrick Bamford back on the score sheet as well. A few games without a goal, so nice to see him return that one 28 minutes in. Then Bobby Reed connecting with a Tom Kearney through ball made it too. And following that, a London derby victory against Brentford by a goal to nil at Craven Cottage. Uh, Bobby Reed converting from the spot 30 minutes in for his second in two as we made sure with our three straight clean sheets and three straight wins as well. So on the back of nine points from a possible 12 in a run off camera, as you can see, we remain in the top 10 with uh, 19 points on the board uh, from our first 11 games so top 10 right now we're still currently uh, we're currently now 12 points off Crystal Palace in 18th place I said at the start of the season you know we I think now we're good enough to avoid a relegation scrap now I know we've only just began season three but honestly as I, meant, I mentioned before our team is decent our team is really good and to be honest we shouldn't really really be looking at slipping lower than 14th 15th at the absolute lowest so 10th place right now and only one point off a Europa Conference League spot as well long way to go but a fair Fairly decent start. Should have mentioned as well, once again, we've got a fantastic defensive record to begin the campaign off. Just like last season, we are the sixth best defensive team in the Premier League right now. And by the way, just real briefly on this too, can I show you the clean sheets charts right now? Yeah, uh, Marek Rodak, who once again is having a really good season for us right now in the top six for clean sheets, four in his first 11. I've just offered him a new contract. It's 24 grand a week, which is really, really cheap. And whilst he's still got a year and a half left, the dude deserves a pay rise, man. Like seriously, if you're willing to put the graft in and perform above expectations, you deserve the extra cash. Know you're worth, Marek. You deserve a new contract, son. You're getting it from me. Anyway, uh, for the first of the two games is indeed the Canaries away at Carrow Road, as we'll take them on here in East Anglia. Uh, a few injuries to report, which is funny, because in the last episode I was going, oh, do you know what's funny? We haven't had many injuries in this FM save. Well, now we've got a couple of serious ones. Uh, Robinson has gone down. Thankfully, he's back to training, but not fit enough to play in the first game. Carl Walker Peters is also down, as you have a little bit of a problem fullback right now. He's out of a hip injury. We won't see him again until after the World Cup. And Anthony Knockout is also down as well with another hip injury too. So two long-term injuries there. Robinson's was like six weeks as well. So yeah, we've had a few injury problems in the run-off camera, but thankfully hasn't affected our performances too much. So 4-2-3-1. Uh, Rodak is in goal. Back four is Joe Bryan, Tosin, Jerome and Connor Roberts with Zambo and Gagliardini through the middle. You might have noticed I've changed Zambo and Gagliardini now. Um, normally I'll play a ball midfielder and deep line playmaker. But in the run-off camera, I've been using a box to box alongside a ball midfielder just to help us go a bit you know more uh, you know get a few more bodies up further up the pitch if you will we're box to box I suppose to a deep line player who just sits back uh, still Caballero's on the left uh, Reed's on the right and Cook supports Bamford up top so I'm gradually phasing Kearney out of the team on the bench Darlow Porteous Mings Reed Kearney Camera and Mitrich as well first of two it's Norwich away let's make it four straight clean sheets and four straight wins for Fulham come on Fulham <laughs> So first highlight falling just after half an hour mark and oh Jerome off the post heads into the woodwork as the Canaries will escape. Seven shots so far, only the one on target though as it's still 0-0. And again, defensively, just like last season, I've got absolutely no problems whatsoever. The back four all putting in a really good shift and Marek as well. We are so secure in our back line, but the problem is again, going forward, we can be a little bit passive at times and a little bit stagnant. Still 0-0, second half to come though. Obviously, you have a reputation for being quite good at set pieces as well, so that's always good to know. If we win a dead ball situation in a threatening area, we have a very good chance converting. 
But obviously Bamford's come in and again has dropped off a little bit after a red hot start. But still looks pretty decent as Joe Bryan's got space to chip one in and that was <laughs> terrible. Couldn't even beat the first man as Max Aarons clears away and it's still 0-0. Go on, give it back to Joe. Let him have another go. Let him have another go down left-hand side. Okay, they'll go right instead. Probably a little bit more sensible. Tossin to Lewis as we look for an opening here. Back to Jerome. And Norwich, very disciplined, not giving us any sort of space to work our way through. Caballero turns Max Aarons, leaves him in the dust, back to Zambo, the box to box. Brian almost shut me up just wide. I'll tell you what I really think I need to change as well is the advanced playmaker in FM this year. Because I mentioned it before, Kearney has been nothing short of quite underwhelming since the save began. And he's supposed to be our main playmaker. But I think I think it's just advanced playmakers in general just aren't very effective this year. I think moving forward, I want to change to attacking midfielders so they can be goal scorers as well as goal providers. I will bring on Tom though with just over 15 minutes to go. And I think if I am to spend in January when the window comes around, again, we've got around 25 million to work with. If I was to look for a new position, it wouldn't be an out and out goal scorer up top. It would either be an inside forward or, again, an attacking midfielder of sorts. And again, with Dan James going to Germany, with Anthony Knockart injured as well, inside forwards can be a little bit ineffective right now as well. Let's take off Caballero, who's not played well, put Bamford out on the left and bring on Mitrovic. What we'll do is have him as a complete forward so we can link up play as well as go for goals as well. And I think I'll bring on Harrison Reed for Gagliardini and swap those two roles around, but I don't think it's going to matter much at all. Wow, okay, relatively anticlimactic first game of the two. Goal is at Norwich, but you know what? Four games without a loss and four straight clean sheets as well. Happy with that out there. There were some positives, no doubt about it. Lockdown defence though, like seriously, lockdown defence to pass four games. It's been really, really impressive. So that does move us up to ninth place then, still outside the European spot. But again, I was not targeting a European spot come the start of the campaign and I'm still not now. The real question is though, if we're not a European standard team, are we a top 10 team yet? Like we're clearly not a top 7 team, but are we a top 10 team? Are we a consistent 8th, 9th, 10th finish? I'm not too sure. I think we're getting there. I, I definitely think from next year onwards we could target that. But now, mm, not too sure. I think, I think we're like one really good player away from being a top 10 team consistently. One one good player. And oh, Callum Wilson moved on to West Ham. Did they fork out the 20 odd million? How much did they pay? 28 million for Callum Wilson. I tell you what, I was tempted. I was tempted. But I think I made the right call bringing in Patrick Bamford instead. Much better goal to game ratio to start the campaign off and cheaper as well by half the money. I think I made the right call there. And here are our three representatives for the World Cup as well. Tosin going with Nigeria, they're in Group B. Bobby's going with Jamaica, they're in Group B. And Anthony going with America after his injury, they're in Group D. I'll show you the groups as well. I showed you them before and you might notice there's one nation which is not there. There's one nation which is not there. And you're probably thinking, we know who it is, just say it. England. England failed to qualify for the World Cup. They're not going. Fascinating. And this will please some of you guys as well. Uh, for those wondering how England failed to qualify for the World Cup, well, this was a group which they probably would have thought, it's a banker. It's definitely us topping it. In the end, Scotland topped the group to qualify with Turkey winning in the playoffs. How amazing is that? Absolutely crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. I know that will please a lot of the Scots that watch me, no doubt. I don't downplay uh, international football, no doubt about it. I mentioned it before. I don't, I don't actually watch it, to be honest. I don't really watch international football at all. I, I obviously... Okay. Um, <laughs> I obviously do put on the England games and sometimes I love them on the background, sometimes on the radio. But as I mentioned before, international football for me, I, I can't really put my finger on exactly why it is. And you never know. Uh, you know, I'm always open to this theory. Some people have told me it's probably because, and with no disrespect to my team, Millwall, but we're not going to have many international representatives on the international scene. So maybe that is one of the reasons why. Subconsciously, because I haven't got many club rep I haven't got any. My team don't have any. The team I support don't have many club representatives. Maybe that's the main reason why I just can't get into international football. But um, even so, even so, I'm still excited for the Euros. I know everyone is. Everyone was sad to see it postponed last year. And I'm still excited to see it return for this summer. Anyway, heading into the second and final game is indeed the final one before we go away with 
the World Cup. We do indeed take on West Ham. Also, a very good start this season right now, sat in a European place. So, big game here for two teams aiming to keep a European chance alive and stay in the top 10 as well. Uh, should I make any change on the back of the draw there? Let's make one. Why not? Let's bring in Tom Kearney for Lewis Kirk, who unfortunately has not been the player I was hoping it'd be. And any more changes? Let's get Robinson back to finish. This is the last game anyway. Uh, in for Joe Bryan. And that will do for me. So, Rodick in goal. Uh, I think, did he get a minor injury in training a few days ago? Yeah, he's totally fine. Robinson, Sossi, and Jerome and Roberts to back four. Zambo and Gagladini wants through the middle with Cavalier and Reed on the wings. Kearney supporting Patrick Bamford up top. Slowed down a little bit. Love to see him return with a goal today. Darlow, Porteous, Mings, Reed, Cook, Camera, and Mitrovic are on the bench. Second final game. It's West Ham at home. Let's see if we can extend the unbeaten run to five. Come on, Fulham. Forgot to mention, by the way, um, after England's failure to qualify for the World Cup, they decided to part ways with Gareth Southgate. Guess who's in charge of England now? It's actually not beyond the realms of possibility. I mean, I discussed him in the very last episode. He left Burnley. I thought he was sacked. He wasn't sacked. He, he took a job that he simply could not turn down. Yeah, Sean Dyche is now the England manager. And I'll be honest here, as Sofiane Buffal converts from close range and makes it 1-0, that's not beyond the realms of possibility in the future. He's, he's, a, he's a very good manager. People forget how young Sean Dyche is as well. I think he's still... I think he's still in his late 40s, if not his early 50s. That's not too old for a manager. So West Ham in front, three minutes in. Great ball by Felipe Anderson. Robinson caught napping. Should have kept Brian out there. Buffal makes it 1-0. Yeah, we're not a consistently top 10 team yet. I just don't think we are. I really don't. When you look at the other teams around us as well, Chelsea have got to a poor start this season. Wolves are underperforming, uh, just like they were back in season one. I mean, ultimately, like there are just too many better teams the, you know, capable of finishing in the top 10 than us. We, we are going to get there and we are getting there slowly. But really, you know, Europa League, Europa Conference League, that is way too ambitious and way too unrealistic. But even just finishing consistently 8th, 9th or 10th, even that is a bit too ambitious in just our third season. All I want, again, 11th to 15th place right now, staying established in the Premier League, that's more than good enough for me. Say it with me once again, hashtag slow and steady. So 52 minutes in, still down by a goal. Bobby Reed tackled, Bertrand clears, and as Wilson plays it back, here come the hammers. Anderson to Juricic, and that's a great ball over the top, and I just dissed him a moment ago, and he almost shut me mouth there. Fantastic block by Jerome, and Callum Wilson denied the second goal for West Ham. Over half an hour to go, still down by a goal, but at the moment it's West Ham looking more likely to score again. And it could happen right here, the goal scorer will be foul, whips in a corner, and Suchek, so bloody good, makes it 2-0, and the Hammers do double their lead. This guy, I swear at some point or another, everyone had him in his FPL. Suchek with the goal, heading into Sofian foul corner, float to the back stick, Rodak getting caught in no man's land to be fair, and a simple finish at the far post. 2-0 West Ham, game's done. And there it is, 2-0 West Ham and our clean sheet and unbeaten streak comes to an end there. Pretty disappointing, but again, not too surprising. And again, those are the sort of teams who are good enough to finish consistently in the top 10. We're not quite there yet. Like, we're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. Slow and steady, boys. Slow and steady. But that will end today's episode and the first part of Season 3 of the Football Manager Series, guys. So, thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have done, please do drop a like. Don't forget, we'll be coming back after the World Cup. So, I've got a ton of fixtures to play through. It's going to take me a long time as I won't return until Boxing Day. And I think we probably will return with that double header there as we close out the Premier League's first start. Uh, first first half with Chelsea away in a West London derby off to a tough start and Spurs at home as well and we'll find out what happened in World Cup 2022 with Qatar have a great day guys much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode of the Football Manager Save after well a very long time <laughs> very soon